ಸರ್ವೋಪನಿಷದೋ ಗಾವೋ ದುಗ್ಧಗೋಪಾಲನಂದನ ಪಾರ್ಥೋವತ್ಸ ಸುಧೀರ್ ಭೋಕ್ತ ದುಗ್ಧ ಗೀತಾಮೃತ ಮಹತ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅಲೆವೆಂತ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಗವದ್ ಗೀತಾ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ದಿ ಆರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ವಿರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಡಿ ದ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಹೆಸ್ ಥೋಲ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ್ ಯೋಗ ಕರ್ಮಸು ಕೌಶಲಂ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಯೋಗ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಪರ್ಫೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಅವರ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಆಸ್ ಅ ವೇ ಆಫ್ ಯೋಗ ನಾ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಡೆಫಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಯೋಗ ಕರ್ಮಸು ಕೌಶಲಂ ಒನ್ ಡೆಫಿನೇಷನ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಕರ್ಮಸು ಕೌಶಲಂ ಇತಿ ಯೋಗ ಬಟ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಗುಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅವರ್ ಬಾಡೀಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಅ ಥೀಫ್ ಹೂ ಡಸ್ ಹೀಸ್ ಜಾಬ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆಲ್ ಸ್ಟೀಲಿಂಗ್ ವುಡ್ ಬಿ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ಡ್ ಅ ಯೋಗಿ ದಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ದ ಟ್ರೂ ಡೆಫಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕರ್ಮಸು ಯೋಗ ಇತಿ ಕೌಶಲಂ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಟು ಗಾಡ್ ಇನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಕರ್ಮ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಟ್ರೂ ಕುಶರ್ತ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಸ್ ಕುಶರ್ತ ಕುಶ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ದಿಸ್ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಕಾಮನ್ಲಿ ಫಾರ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಯಗ್ನ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಯಾಕ್ರಿಫೈಸ್ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ವುಡ್ ಟೆಲ್ ದರ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಕೆ ಗೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗೆಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ನಾವು ದಿಸ್ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಯುನೀಕ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಎಜಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಶಾರ್ಪ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ವುಡ್ ಗೋ ಟು ಗ್ರಾಬ್ ದ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪುಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೋಸೆಸ್ ದೇ ವುಡ್ ಕಟ್ ದರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಎನಿ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಮಾರ್ಟ್ ಎನಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟ್ಯಾಲೆಂಟೆಡ್ ಎನಫ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ದ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ವಿಥೌಟ್ ಕಟಿಂಗ್ ದರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಕೂಶಲ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಕೂಶ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಮನ್ ಹೂಸ್ ಇಂಟೆಲಿಜೆಂಟ್ ಸಮನ್ ಹೂಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಕಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ವೇ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಲೈವ್ಸ್ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆನಿ ಪ್ಲೇಸಸ್ ವರ್ ಆರ್ ಸೋಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ಸ್ ಕಟ್ ವಾರ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಇಫ್ ವರ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಫೀಲ್ ದ ಟೆನ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಅವರ್ ಲೈವ್ಸ್ ಈವನ್ ಇಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಎಸ್ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಪಿಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ಅವರ್ ಕ್ಲೋತ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಡ್ರೈ ಕ್ಲೀನರ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಫೀಲ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ರಿಮೈಂಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಪುಟ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಕ್ಯಾಲೆಂಡರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಫೀಲ್ ದ ಟೆನ್ಷನ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಆಟ್ ದ ಡೇಸ್ ಐ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಮೈ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಡ್ರೈ ಕ್ಲೀನರ್ಸ್ ಐ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಮೈ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಡ್ರೈ ಕ್ಲೀನರ್ಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಎಸ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಎಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯೆಟ್ ಇಟ್ ವೇಸ್ ಆನ್ ಅಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಆಪೋಸಿಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಸೇಜಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಪ್ರಮುಖ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಅ ಇಯರ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದಿಲ್ಲಿ ಅಕ್ಷರ ಧಾಮ್ ವಾಸ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫೋರ್ ದೆರ್ ವರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟು ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ವಾಲಂಟಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಸೈಟ್ ದೆರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ವಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಲ್ಲಿ ಅನದರ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸೆಟ್ ಟು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸೆಟ್ ಟು ಪ್ರಮುಖ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ದಟ್ ಇಫ್ ವಿ ಗೇವ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಸೈಟ್ ಟು ಸಮನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಫ್ರೀ ದೇ ವುಡ್ ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಟು ಡೂ ವಿತ್ ಇಟ್ ದೇ ವುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಅಟ್ಯಾಕ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಮಚ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಮುಖ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಈವನ್ ಅ ಪೆಬಲ್ಸ್ ವೇಟ್ ಆನ್ ಮೈ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಫೀಲ್ ಎನಿ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಯೋಗ ಅಟೈನ್ಡ್ ಅ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ವರ್ ಆರ್ ಸೋ ಕನ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಕಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಫ್ ವರ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ವಿ ಫೇಲ್ ಇನ್ ಫೇಲಿಯರ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ನೆಗೆಟಿವ್ ಇಮೋಷನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನೆಗೆಟಿವ್ ರಿಯಾಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಕರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಕರ್ಣ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅನ್ ಇವೆಂಟ್ ಕಾಲ್ ದ
that we can become so arrogant. Duryodhan's biggest problem was that in success he became arrogant. And that's why he had to suffer throughout his life. There are many different ways. These are just three examples of where our soul is cut when we're doing karma. And because of that, we don't have that kusharta. We don't have that skill. But now if we have yoga, if we connect our karma to God, then we can rise above these different problems. And our soul can actually experience peace through the same karma we do every day. There are two steps that Krishna Bhagwan tells Arjun throughout the Gita. The first, Krishna Bhagwan tells Arjun, Tasmat sarveshu kaleshu mam anusmara yudhyacha. You have to fight a war. But remember me throughout the war. Mam anusmara. Remember me. Keep your mind focused on me. Sing my praises. Bhajan, devotion. For example, every day we have so much time on our hands. How much of that time do we dedicate to actually worshipping God, remembering God? Now, there is time that we can take out specially for it, but there's also times where we're doing things that don't require our full attention. For example, if you're in the bathroom or taking a shower, brushing your teeth, those are all times where you can use a part of your mind to keep reflecting on God. Keep reflecting on God. And by doing that, keep reflecting on God. Mam Anusmara. Our soul is at peace. For example, there was a woman in India named Janbai. And she had no good livelihood. She was a very poor woman. And she would gather the feces from other animals and make dung cakes out of them for fuel. And while she was doing that, she would pray to God. Vithala, 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 Vithala. And then she would put those dung cakes against the wall and they would dry in the sun and then they could be burned for different types of fuel. One day it just so happened that her dung cakes and everyone else's dung cakes from the village, they started to get mixed up. Now who could define the difference between them? There's no branding on there. So somebody came from the government and they wanted to find out how do we make the decision of what to separate. John Bai said, you'll know mine are different from everyone else's. It's like, why? Are they a different color? Are they a different size? So no. Everyone makes their dung cakes the same size and the same color. Then how are yours going to be any different? John Bai said, if you put the dung cake to your ear and you hear the sound vittala, vittala, vittala from it, then you know that that one is mine. And if you don't hear it, then that's not mine. And the government official said, that's impossible. This is an inanimate object. This is something that has no sense, no soul, nothing in its life. It's not alive. How can it talk to me? Janba said, just try it. And one by one, the government official, he would put the dung cakes to his ear and he would hear it. Vitala, vitala, vitala from the, some of the cakes. In the same way, whatever job we're doing, if we remember Krishna Bhagwan, if we remember Bhagwan Swami Nara, if we remember our Guru while we're doing it, if you're an engineer or an architect building a house, then imagine when somebody else enters that house and they hear Shri Krishna Sharanam Mama. Because while you were building it, and every time you were hitting a nail, every time you were putting up a wall, that's what you were thinking about. It'll play an effect. It'll have an impact. That's the first step. Mam Anusmara Yudhyacha. And the second is one of perhaps the most famous shlokas of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Krishna Bhagavan tells Arjun, Karma ne vadikaraste, ma phaleshu kadachana, ma karma phala hetur bhur, Mate sangostva karmani. Arjun, you only have a right to do karma, to do action. You have no right over the consequences. Don't keep any desire for any consequence. And in that, you will be unattached to everything and you will have liberation. This is called the Karma Chatur Sutri from the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Now, some people feel that we should have no desire for anything from the action. But Bhagwan Swami Narayan, he gives some explanation. He gives clarity in his Vachnamrut, his scripture. He says that you should have one desire from any action. That one desire should be that by through this action, I want to please God. Because if you lack even that action, then the action itself just becomes ignorant and dark. Tamoguni. There has to be some thought. As Guru Mahan Swami Maharaj very aptly explains, he says, you cannot stop your thoughts, but you can change them. Again, you cannot stop your thoughts, but you can change them. It is impossible to have zero thought for something. So why not have the one thought 
that can provide liberation. The problem we see throughout the world and the problem we see in our own lives is because we lack this one thought. We do actions for some consequence. We want something from the action. We want some fruits in return. And because of that, sometimes we're happy and sometimes we're miserable. We know why bad people are miserable. But good people also have bad times in their lives and the reason is because they forget this. Ved Vyas is the writer of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, the Mahabharat. And Ved Vyas writes his own story at the beginning of his other scripture, the Srimad Bhagavat. Ved Vyas describes his own life. He says one time he was sitting on the banks of the river Saraswati near his ashram. And he was alone. And he was, went into so much depression that he started to talk out loud by himself. Started to talk to himself. And he started to say, my soul has been broken, my soul has been broken. And he was so worried that even if it's ever repaired again, it's like a light bulb that if it breaks and you glue it back together, even the light that comes out from it will be refracted again. He was worried that my soul has become so broken that even if it gets repaired, will the light from my soul ever come back to normal? Will it ever shine as bright? And just by that chance, by God's grace, Naraji was passing by at that time. And Naraji saw and heard Vyasji talking to himself. And Naraji thought to himself that if the greatest sage in all of India has this type of depression, what can be said about everyone else? Everyone else is destined for some problems in their life. Look, problems are a good thing. Problems help us get back and understand where we are in life. For example, there's an anecdote said by our gurus that once there was a painter who had to paint the outside of a building. And climbing up into the scaffolding, he reached the 100th floor where he had to start painting. But when he got to the top, he realized that his paintbrush was left down there. Now, he didn't want to climb back down because that would be half of his day. So he thought to himself that if I can get the attention of someone down there, then I can tie, send a piece of rope, they can tie my paintbrush and I can pull it back. So the first thing he did was he reached into his pocket and he took out a quarter and he threw it on the ground near someone who was passing by. <clears throat> that person bent over, picked up the quarter, looked at the quarter, put it in his pocket and walked on. Another person came by, the painter took out another coin from his pocket, threw it on the ground. That person bent over, picked up the coin, looked at it, put it in his pocket. The painter thought to himself, if I keep doing this, I'm going to be poor by the end of the day. So then the painter took a little pebble off of the wall and he timed it in such a way that there was a person walking by and he dropped it right on that person's head. That person looked up, what do you want? Nothing. I just need you to tie my paintbrush to this rope and send it back up here. In the same way, our gurus tell us that as long as God keeps raining down money on us, we're never going to look up towards Him. But the moment He throws a pebble on our heads, and whether that's a physical ailment, whether it's a family problem, whether it's a problem at work, that little pebble will make us look up towards God and remember that that should be our main focus. In the same way, Vyasji had a problem in his life. Naraji saw it and Naraji decided to help him. Naraji stops there and he asks Vyasji. The first question he says, Vyas, how are you? And Vyas says, I don't know. I don't even know what's wrong with me, but I know that I'm not happy. Naraji says, fine. We can get to the root of the problem. Naraji asks the first question. He says, Have you done anything wrong in your life? Have you sinned? Because if you sin, then that sin will have to take some effect on you. The rules of karma are such that if you do something wrong, something bad will happen to you. Vyashi says, No. I've lived my life according to all the tenets of the scriptures. I've always followed the commands of God and the Guru. I've never sinned in my life. So Naraji says, okay, fine. So you've never sinned in your life. And despite that, you're miserable? He says, yes, despite that, I'm miserable. Imagine, a person who has never sinned in his life is still miserable. Naraji says, fine. Naraji says, if you want to be happy in this life, then you have to offer some service to other people. Have you ever done any sort of seva, any sort of service towards the community? And Vyashi says, of course I have. I've done so much service. I'm the one who organized the Ved so that the people could use those different mantras in their day-to-day -day lives. I'm the one who's given them so many scriptures. I'm the one who's given all these people so much guidance on how to better their own lives. This is my service to the world. 
Naraji says, so you've performed service and despite that you're miserable? Yes, despite my service, my seva, I'm still miserable. Naraji probes the question even further and he says, have you ever offered devotion to God? If you offer devotion to God, then you should have peace. Bhakti. That's the path towards shanti. And Vyashi says, of course I've offered my devotion to God. I'm the person who's written the scriptures. For so many different avtars, I've written the Purans. And in every Puran, every scripture about every different avtar, I sing their praises. I've written thousands and thousands of couplets in praise of all the different demigods and gods. Naraji asks Vyasji, have you offered your devotion to the manifest form of God on this earth? And Vyasji says, yes, I've done that. Krishna Bhagwan is the living, breathing, manifest form of God on this earth. And I've offered him my devotion. In the Mahabharat, I've written all the different actions of God and I've written them with divinity. I've written out the Bhagavad Gita. And I've shown his Vishwaswarup Darshan to the entire world. I've sung God's praises, Krishna Bhagwan's praises. And Naraji says, you've never sinned. You've offered service. You've done your devotion to God. And you've had your devotion at the manifest form of God. And despite that, you're sad? Yes, despite that, I am sad. I am depressed. I am miserable. An asampanna eva abhati. This one word in the Bhagavad has over 60 different critiques on it. 60 different commentaries on what does Vyasji mean when he says that I am a sampan. Some people have described it as if, imagine earning money your entire life. And as you prepare for retirement, you look in your bank balance and you see everything is gone. Everything is gone. The ownership to your house, the ownership to your cars, everything is gone. In one go, you don't know where it's gone. But you have zero, nothing. And at this age, what will you do now? Another person has given a commentary that imagine your one and only child passes away. It's a thought that we never want to have, God forbid. Your one and only child passes away. That hole in your soul is so deep that nothing can fill it. You can't add another ring to your house. You can't buy another car to replace your lost child. That feeling, that hollowness is what it means to be a sampan. And that's how hollow Vyashti felt at that time. He tells Narad, I've done everything that I should do. And despite that, I feel hollow inside. I feel empty inside. I feel dead inside. Why? And Naraji tells him that you did everything, but you did it the wrong way. You did it for some other reason. You did it for the public. You did it to help other people. Or you thought it was good, but you did it to help yourself. Even that is sattvik. Doing it to help yourself. Doing it to feel good about yourself. Even that is just another karma. But none of those things will give you peace. If you want peace, then you have to worship the manifest form of God. Sing His praises. Do everything that you do just as you have always done it. But do it with only one motivation. Do it solely to please God. No other intention. Our motivation is what matters the most in Karma Yoga. Why we do what we do, not what we do. And then Naraji tells him, everything you've done until today, every single scripture you've written until today, every single person you've done, you've helped until today, all of that is equal to a cemetery. It's just dead. It's a graveyard. Now, I want you to take up the same pen and use the same paper that you've done and used for the whole, your whole life. Sit in your same ashram with the same disciples and write something, but with only one intention. Write it to please God. Want nothing in return from it. Do it just to please God. And then you'll be at peace. And at that point, Vyasji goes back to his same ashram, living amongst the same disciples, using the same pen and paper that he's always used. He doesn't have to change anything in his life. All he does is just change his thought inside, change his mind, and all of a sudden, he's at peace. And that is when he writes the Srimad Bhagavad scripture that we read today. That scripture gives Vyasji peace because that scripture was written with zero other motivation. In our life, Karma Yoga teaches us that even if you're living in the mandir and doing arti of God five times a day, you can still have problems if you're doing it the wrong way, with the wrong motivation. But you could be a thousand miles away from God, working, as an engineer, 
as a doctor, as a dentist, flying a plane, doing whatever it is you're doing. But if you're doing it with the right motivation, you will be 100% connected with God and in samadhi and at peace. The same key that locks the door is the same key that opens it. All you have to do is just twist the wrist. In the same way, the same karma that gives us bandhan, that attaches us to the world, is the same karma that can liberate us from the world. All we have to do is just twist our, change our motivation. It's not how much weight you carry that breaks your back, it's how you carry it. It's not how much karma you do that kills you, it's how you do it. If you travel in India in a rickshaw, you're going 20 kilometers an hour, and at the end of 30 minute drive, your entire body is just broken. And if you go on a plane, you're going at 500 kilometers an hour, and you can sleep. It's not the speed that you're working at, it's the level that you're working at. In the same way, it's not how fast you do your karma, it's not how much karma you have to do, it's at what stiti, what state of enlightenment are you at. In the same way, everything we do, you don't have to change anything. Krishna Bhagwan is telling Arjun, do exactly what you do every single day, but do it with this thought. Karma niye vadikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana. Desire nothing else from that karma except to please me. Man mana bhava, mad bhakto, mad yaji, maam namaskuru. If we have this one thought in our minds, then we have mastered the art of karma yoga. So today I pray at the second part of this karma yoga session. The first part taught us the art of karma to avoid three things, distraction, laziness, and sleep. Those three things are to help us do karma better, our actions better. And today, two things. First, remembering God, Mam Anusmara. And the second, always remembering that we have one motivation behind everything we do. That all I want to do from this action is please God. By doing that, I will have complete mental peace and will have attained karma yoga. I pray that we can attain such karma yoga in our daily lives. Astu.